Welcome to Social Studies today. I'm Mrs. Hoover from Pleasant Valley. Hello to all you Pleasant Valley Cougars out there. Today, we're going to continue working on Studies Weekly 18. The lesson is on the Pennsylvania Wildlife section. And the wildlife we're going to be learning about today is the barred owl. What a pretty animal. I guess a savvy fourth grader is going to realize that that's my opinion because of the clue word pretty. But it is my opinion that the barred owl is a beautiful bird and I think it has some amazing qualities. But there I go again with more opinions. Anyway, read along silently as we discover some facts while we are reading Studies Weekly 18, PA Wildlife, Barred Owl. Beltsville State Park is a large park that lies along a dammed section of Pohopoco Creek, a tributary of the Lehigh River. At this park and all over this region, you'll find the barred owl. There are many, many varieties of owls in the world. This one is distinctive by its call. It sounds like it's saying, who, who, who cooks for you? Who, who, who cooks for you all? Kind of makes you hungry, huh? This bird is round headed with brown eyes and a yellow bill. The face is whitish brown with dark brown trim. The body is mottled brown and white. It loves wet areas and deep woods and likes to nest in hollow tree cavities. These very gentle birds can often be seen and heard during the day, and you'll find them dining on rodents, small mammals, birds, frogs, and insects. Did you know that if you wanted to see as well as an owl, your eyes would have to be the size of softballs? Well, as you can see from the picture in the article and from the pictures I've put in my lesson, owls do have pretty big eyes. Remember, if humans wanted to see as well as owls, we would have to have eyes the size of softballs or grapefruits. But there is a drawback to having those big eyes. Our eyes are protected by our skull. That's the bones that make up our head. They surround our eyes. If you gently feel your eyebrows, you can feel the hard bones behind them. If you continue to gently feel around your eye, you'll realize that your eyes are surrounded by bones. Owls have those hard bones in their head and around their eyes too. And because their eyes are so big, the bones that surround them prevent them from moving. And their eyes have more of a rod shape kind of behind, so they can't move their eyes very much, if at all but they can do something that people can't. An owl can turn its head 270 degrees. That's almost like being able to turn their head the whole way around in a circle, but not quite, not quite. They can do this because they have so many more neck bones than people so they have more ability to move their neck. These big eyes and very movable heads and necks are part of what makes them great hunters. Barred owls hunt at night, only occasionally feeding during the day. Their dark brown colored eyes help them camouflage themselves in the dark. They generally sit somewhere high to hunt, like in a tree, 
and use their acute sense of sight and sound to hone in on prey. But they can hover over bodies of water and they will wade into shallow water trying to get themselves a fish or a frog or a crayfish. Another sense they have that is very keen is their sense of hearing. They can hear a mouse rustling in the leaves from about half a mile away. That is pretty incredible. To hear something as quiet as a mouse rustling in leaves from that far of a distance means they have pretty good hearing. They have two ears, just like cats, dogs, people, many other animals, but their ears are hidden by feathers. They have a funnel shaped outer ear that like we have that helps sound uh, travel down through our ear canals, but their ears are at different levels on their head. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you look over here at this particular picture, this is a sketch of an owl skull. And you can see the openings of the nostrils there and the eye sockets. And here are the ear openings. This one on this side is up towards the top of the head. And if you look around at the ear on the other side of an owl's skull, it's down lower, down towards the mouth. So you can see their ears are not evenly set on their head. Now, as people, if we had ears like that, one ear toward the top of our head and the other ear down by our neck, we might think that that would look funny, but it is a good thing for an owl. It helps them hear so well, and it allows them to tell not just what direction a sound is coming from, but whether the sound is coming from a high or a low place, like a tree or the ground. And since barred owls eat mice and rodents that live on the ground, and they also eat other birds or insects that might be in trees, this is a very good physical characteristic for them. And owls are basically silent hunters and they fly silently. Their feathers are soft and pliable. Unlike most other birds that fly, those birds have more stiff feathers with, with like a straw-like structure right down the middle. It's a little bit hard. Owl feathers are softer and they also have this comb-like fringe. You can see it right here very well and right here in these pictures. I tried to find pictures where you could see it very easily. They're on the leading edge of their flight feathers and that allows air to break up as it passes over their wings, which prevents any whistling or flapping noise. And this allows owls to maneuver very quietly through the trees and approach their prey very stealthily. Now, I don't know about you, but I think it's really cool to learn about these beautiful owls that are living in Pennsylvania. And if you liked learning about this owl, you might wanna think about becoming an ornithologist when you grow up. That is a person who studies birds, all aspects of their life, and becomes an expert in knowledge about, about them. Well, we're almost done with our lesson. I just want to take a quick minute and let you hear the distinctive call of a barred owl. Listen closely. This is the call only made by a barred owl. Remember, our article said 
that there are many, many varieties of owls in the world. This one, meaning the barred owl, is distinctive by its call. Now, when I play this little tape, you're going to hear all kinds of birds, but I want you to be focusing on trying to find the distinctive barred owl call. Remember, it sounds like who, who, who cooks for you. All right, let's see if you can pick it out. There it was, did you hear that? Okay, now that you've heard that, you might be thinking, yes, I have heard that sound before. Um, and you probably have. If you've gone out in your yard at night, especially if you live near the woods or uh, have some trees near your house, and the next time you hear that sound, I hope you recognize it as a barn owl. There's a barn owl somewhere near you who's probably getting ready to hunt. All right, we're gonna end our lesson by letting you show what you know. We're gonna do that today by using a three, two, one, and it looks like this. Three, two, one. Three is write three sentences that describe what a barred owl looks like. Two, write two items that barred owls eat. One, write what distinguishes the barred owl from other owls. In what way is it different from all other owls? All right, fourth grade, thank you for tuning in today. And I hope you have a pleasant rest of the day.